This is how everyone completes the square, while this is how I complete the square. To motivate the problem, let's try to draw the graph of y equals to x squared plus 4x plus 5. This expression means that when we substitute the value x equals to 1 into the equation, we obtain a y value of 10. As the value of x changes, the corresponding value of y changes as well. In fact, as we change the x values and trace out all of the different possible points, we obtain a curve. This is known as a parabola, and there is a peculiar turning point on this parabola. The natural question would be, what are its coordinates? The x value is given by negative of 4 divided by 2 times 1. For details on why this is a secret recipe, check out the document in the description box below. And we can use our recipe to cook up our dish by substituting x equals to negative 2 into the original expression. This turns out to be the y-coordinate of our turning point. Furthermore, we can express this quadratic function in terms of the turning point. We take x minus negative 2 all squared plus 1. This process is known as completing the square and is one of the fastest ways to do so. So we can consider a different quadratic expression, x squared minus 4x plus 5, and try to complete its square. We need to prepare our ingredients, which is an expression of the form x minus our recipe all squared plus our dish. To calculate the recipe, we need to take the negative of negative 4 divided by 2 times 1. This equals 2. To obtain our dish, we would substitute 2 into the original expression, and this equals 1. To complete the square, we combine our recipe and our dish into our ingredients to obtain x minus 2 all squared plus 1. Sometimes the first number in front of the x squared may not equal 1. This would slightly change our ingredients by multiplying the squared term with this number in front. In this case, this number is 3. To calculate the recipe, we refer to the first two coefficients and calculate the negative of 5 divided by 2 times 3. To obtain our dish, we would substitute x equals to negative 5 over 6. This equals 59 over 12. Combining our recipe and our dish, the completed square form is 3 times x plus 5 over 6 all squared plus 59 over 12. We could run the same process with the general quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c. Since the number in front of the x squared is a, our ingredients will look like a times x minus the recipe all squared plus the dish. Our recipe here will be negative of b divided by 2 times a. We can substitute x equals the recipe to obtain our dish. Perhaps you could check this out with a little bit of careful algebra as an exercise. To obtain our completed square form, we combine the recipe with the dish and the ingredients to obtain our final answer. We're gonna tuck it aside just for a while and come back to it later on. Completing the square has many mathematical uses. For example, we can try to factor quadratic expressions. To factor this expression, we first prepare our ingredients and calculate our recipe to be the negative of negative 4 over 2 times 1. We can plug our recipe into the original expression to obtain our dish. We can combine the recipe, dish and ingredients to obtain our completed square form, which equals x minus 2 all squared minus 9. We can factor this expression since 9 equals 3 squared. And we can use the standard factorization of the difference of two squares. Simplifying with algebra, we obtain x plus 1 times x minus 5. This allows us to factor quadratic expressions without having to do any kind of guesswork. On that note, we can also use completing the square to solve equations. We'll first prepare our ingredients 
compute our recipe to be the negative of negative 4 over 2 times 1. Substitute the recipe to obtain our dish. And combine the recipe and dish to obtain our completed squared form. This equals x minus 2 all squared minus 10. This means we want to solve the equation x minus 2 all squared minus 10 equals 0. We can add 10 on both sides, take square roots on both sides, and add 2 on both sides to obtain our two solutions. In fact, this process can be gone through more generally. Since the coefficient of the quadratic expression is a, our ingredients will look like a times x minus the recipe all squared plus the dish. Our recipe will be the negative of b divided by 2 times a. We can plug in the recipe to obtain our dish and combine the recipe and the dish to obtain the completed squared form. This is a rather complicated expression involving a's, b's and c's. But hang in there as we solve this particular equation. We can add the constant term on both sides, divide out the a, take square roots, and subtract by b over 2a on both sides. If you look at this expression really closely, this is nothing more than the famous quadratic formula that we learned in high school. Another application is to show that a quadratic expression is always positive. Let's first complete the square by preparing the ingredients. Let's calculate the secret recipe, which is the negative of negative 4 over 2 times 1. Let's plug in the recipe to obtain our dish, and combine the recipe and the dish to obtain our completed squared form. This time we get x minus 2 all squared plus 2. But the squared term is always non-negative and must be not smaller than 0 and 0 plus 2 equals 2. But 2 is a positive number. This means that everything on the left-hand side is strictly greater than 0. Graphing this would make the argument much more intuitive. The turning point is given by the coordinates 2, 2. Since the coefficient of x squared is positive, everything in the expression lies above this minimum point. So points on the left would lie above 2, 2 and points on the right would lie above 2, 2 as well. This means that no matter which x value we use, the y value of the graph is always not smaller than 2. We could even discuss this idea in greater generality. Notice that the dish tells us where the minimum point of the quadratic curve is. In other words, if the dish equals to 0, the quadratic curve would have exactly one intersection with the x-axis. If, however, the dish is negative, the curve would intersect the x-axis two times. And if the dish is positive, it would have no intersections with the x-axis. We have previously seen that the dish is given by a complicated expression involving a's, b's and c's. In particular, the term b squared minus 4ac plays a crucial role here. The dish is negative precisely when b squared minus 4ac is positive. This gives us two real roots to the quadratic equation. If the dish equals to 0, this corresponds to b squared minus 4ac equaling 0. This gives us one real root to the quadratic equation and the dish being positive corresponds to b squared minus 4ac being negative. In this case, we have no real roots to the quadratic equation. The term b squared minus 4ac is a special term given by the name a discriminant. It discriminates between the cases when the quadratic equation has solutions or no solutions. For further details, you can check out the document in the description box below. A final application of quadratic equations arises in the use of Pythagoras' theorem. To see the proof of Pythagoras' theorem by two high school students in 2023, click on the video here.